this is the lineup that England have to play if we stand any chance of either winning the World Cup or even going far in the tournament. For me, it's got to be Pickford in goal because he's got that tournament experience and Ramsdale and Pope don't. And the centre-backs has to be Stones and Ben White because even though I don't rate Ben White, he's still better than Harry Maguire because Harry Maguire is even worse than my man Zashes at defending. And right back, got to be Kieran Trippier because Walker's not fit. So for at least the first couple of games in the tournament, I believe Trippier has to start at right back because he's done excellently for Newcastle under Eddie Howe. And I believe he's very underrated and I believe he's one of the best right backs in the world. Left back, um, it's a pity Ben Chilwell got injured at this time where we crucially needed him, but it's going to have to be Luke Shaw, unfortunately, because the thing is with Luke Shaw is he tends to do very good in an England shirt, but not very good in a United shirt. And I believe Luke Shaw can provide us a lot going forward. Defensively, I think he can be a bit suspect, but it he have to do because we've got no Ben Chilwell because of his injury. In the midfield, has to be Rice, Madison and Bellingham. And then the front three has to be Saka on the right, Kane down the middle and Foden on the left. And I feel like Rashford, I don't believe he's good enough to start for England because I believe Saka and Foden are better players than him. But Rashford's that type of player that you can put on for like the last 20 to 30 minutes and maybe he could come on and, and change the game as an impact sub. And maybe if we're like um, like 1-0 up in say a game like against like France in the quarterfinals, we can maybe bring on someone like Phillips or Henderson to see the game up. Um, even with this team, we probably would still have a little chance of winning the World Cup and this is probably a team that Southgate won't play because knowing him he's probably going to play a back five and probably two CDMs as well because he's so pragmatic. I don't know how he's still in the job to be honest. If we had say someone like a Tuchel or a Pochettino or like uh, maybe like a Jose Mourinho we'd have a much better chance of winning the World Cup because Southgate, he has his favourites. He loves Harry Kane. He loves Maguire. He loves he loves um Declan Rice. He loves he loves um He loves um Mason Mount. He just has his favourites and that's why until England get rid of Southgate, we're never going to be a serious threat at a tournament just because he's ha he has his favourites and that's what holds us back from winning tournaments. And I believe, you know, you know what's going to happen. He's going to play Maguire at, and he's going to play Mount and he's going to play probably Sterling, even though... It, it, it 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 should be Foden and Saka as the wingers. Because even though I love Sterling to pieces, but since he's been at Chelsea, he just hasn't been the same player as he was at City because Chelsea just haven't used him right since signing him because they, they, they've been playing him out of position a lot of the time and they haven't played him in a specific position and his, like, actual accurate position. So... So, in my opinion, Sterling shouldn't start because, not because he's not a good player, because based on current form, Rashford's in better form, Saka's in better form, Foden's in better form. I feel like this Chelsea move is something that Sterling could live to regret down the line because I, I believe Potter, he did a great job at Brighton, but I'm not sure if he's at, 
the level where he can be at a club at like at, at, at a club like Chelsea and succeed because I don't believe he's right for this Chelsea job because I believe he he could have done with having a couple of more years at Brighton and then maybe move into like a team like Chelsea or something like that then because I feel like he's taken this Chelsea job too soon and I feel like he should have stayed at Brighton because he was more suited to their style of play and um, he, 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 he was loved by the fans there so it makes no sense why he left there really because I don't think he, he knows what he's doing at a big club yet and I feel like he could have done with a few more years at, at Brighton because I think that could have helped him to like maybe build his way up to like a club like Chelsea and maybe like three or four years. I feel like this Brighton this Brighton exit maybe came too soon for Potter. And I feel like he hasn't used Sterling right and, and yeah they had an alright start when he first came in, but since like his his first couple of games, since then they've been in terrible form. They've lost loads of games to like sides like City, Newcastle, Brighton, um Leeds, Southampton that was before he he was in, but like I don't think Potter has made a big difference at Chelsea because I believe even though Tuchel did have a couple of poor results around the time that he did get sacked, but I don't I'm not convinced that Potter has done a better job than Tuchel. I feel like Tuchel, even though I don't rate him as a manager, I feel like Chelsea could have given him more time. Because, um, yes, he had a couple of bad results, but he also won them a Champions League and he also helped them grind out wins in the early parts of the season, like against sides like West Ham. And also, um, even though he was sacked, I don't think he deserved it at that stage because, yes, they were in poor form, but I don't think that was necessarily his fault. I think that was more like down to like Todd Bowley on like the signings that he made in like because I feel like that Aubameyang signing was more like of a panic buy and not like a signing that they actually like needed. So thanks for watching this video. It did turn into a bit of a discussion about Graham Potter when this video was meant to be on about um England's um best possible lineup that we could line up at the World Cup, but. At least we did, we got both in there. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm trying to get to 150 subscribers before Christmas. That would be nice. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.